All right, troops, welcome back. I'm doing three today, it looks like. Uh, welcome to the Tactical Perspective. I am the crusty old crow, most know me as Ryan, and this is my hobby, doing a YouTube review on the G.I. Joe Classified series action figures by Hasbro that are available uh, now, and they've been out for a few years, but they've really picked up steam and momentum, and uh, it seems the company uh, design team are under a heightened, shall we call it, uh, directive as a company to provide a perfect homage to the 80s figure. And I'm just gonna quickly turn my lights on because I didn't do that before the video started. And then, as you guys can hear in the background, we've got some Canadian music back on here. We're back listening to the, the Tragically Hip and there's a reason I picked this song. It is Nautical Disaster because today we are talking about a nautical themed action figure. We are doing number 73 in the line, Torpedo, Edward Torpedo Lealua. Okay, there is a picture of the box art. And this is a figure that spoke to me on a few levels as most of these figures do on my childhood connection to this guy, which I'll get into a little bit later. But let's have a look at that box art. You've got a uh, torpedo on the deck of a submarine that's, or it seems like a submarine that's come to the surface, but there's something else going on. Maybe they're coming into a Cobra base or the, its defense perimeter has these eels that come out. I don't know what the story is, but definitely uh, some storytelling at play. And uh, I guess it's uh, the same deal with the Cobra eel set. The box will show a similar view from a different angle, uh, doing virtually the same thing. Uh, on there, you've got your box art of the uh, Edward Lealoa and his dive gear coming at you with his spear gun. And up in the corner, we've got all his accessories. So it includes his uh, submachine gun with magazine. It's like a boarding style gun. Uh, he's got his um, underwater uh, spear gun with the, the you can see all the uh, elastic cord, that's what actually makes the thing fire. There's no firing pin per se or combustion element because it's underwater. Uh, they got the dive knife and his scuba gear with detachable mask. We'll have a look at that when we have a look at the figure and then the flippers. And if you guys remember back in the day, uh, if you had this figure, like I had this figure, uh, or was, was fortunate to have this figure as a child, You'll remember that he was uh, one of the very first divers you would get ever, right? So his, uh, I'm just gonna quickly go over his beautiful little homage. Uh, I pulled this up off of uh, the internet clearly, but it is his file card and it is warrant officer. Comes down here, he's warrant level four. Warrant officer, uh, Edward W. Leo Loha. Okay. So already I'm on the hook with a, a, a wonder. I, I wonder when the guys did this creative thing. I remember back in the 80s, what was big in the 80s just prior to uh, G.I. Joe catching its momentum, if not at the same time, uh, one comedian that was really big was Eddie Murphy. And uh, he had a little routine he did in the show, uh, his stand-up routine for Delirious. If you guys remember, he talks about G.I. Joe is playing in the water and in that big brown shucking, right? And he's talking about playing his, playing with his G.I. Joe in the bathtub. And uh, so I wonder if that's why they went with the first name Eddie for him. Eddie Lealoa or Edward Lealoa. Anyways, it uh, goes on. His, uh, he's a Navy SEAL and he has a subspecialty in demolitions. And he's from, I think it's Ai, uh, Hawaii. And he's a warrant officer. What's it say there for the description? Torpedo was a scuba instructor prior to enlistment. Attained black belts in three martial arts by age 19 in Wushu Kempo and Goju Ryu. I think that's how you say that. Proficient Filipino butterfly knife, ba Balison. And uh, training records after SEAL school uh, classified. So we don't know what else he got qualified after he did his SEAL training, but... He's a warrant officer and he works alone pretty much. So you got to figure he, he does some black ops, I think. He's a bit of a wet works guy, I think. Expert, most NATO small arms, NATO and Warsaw Pact explosive devices. Okay, he spends off-duty hours perfecting his fighting skills and marksmanship. 
strict vegetarian, regarded by his teammates as highly com uh, competent professional, but has personality of a cold fish. You're definitely describing to me the 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 next level of Snake Eyes kind of compatible character in Torpedo in that I think this guy's job is the wet work stuff. Dive in, get behind lines, and take people out. Nah, put in the darker tone on the Joes what they seem to dance around with that file card. So if you guys remember that, and then what we got was this action figure back here, which you can see Hasbro has stayed true to its goal of uh, in capturing these figures in their, their true 80s form and just modernizing them uh, on a, a more subtle but noticeable level uh, and, uh, and doing their best work right now. And I think they are, they're achieving that 100%. That's the, almost the perfect picture I could show you to show the difference between the old 1980s three and a half and today's six inch, okay? So you guys remember having Torpedo? For me, I certainly remember having them, but you guys also might remember them in the cartoon where they depicted them more, looking more Hawaiian uh, than, than what the action figure would allow at the time with its uh, paint limitations and what they were willing to uh, spend money on at the time, right? So there you go. That was a uh, Edward Lealoa then and back then even on the uh, the box art You couldn't necessarily tell what his ethnicity was, but that's how you saw him guys, right? So uh, Really just a quick moment to talk about him there. Uh, I remember having him I remember picking him up and going back to our place and my mom's partner at the time uh, took issue with the fact that I had come home with a brand new action figure when we had been saving for stuff and I, uh, I think I had spent my allowance. It was like a nice treat. And I remember saying, but it's, it, it's torpedo. Like we're going to the cottage or we're going to the beach or something like that. I think his family had a cottage that we were going to and I wanted to have water Joes, right? Because you were playing in the water. And up till going out to a beach or a cottage or in a lake somewhere, uh, being growing up in a city, you rarely had a time to play with your water joes in their element besides bathtub time. And uh, I'm not gonna not admit that I was the kind of nine year old that would have brought the hovercraft and the muskrat and, or sort of the water moccasin and any dive joe into my bathtub time with me to the point where my mom would tell me to get out because the water's probably cold right uh so again a shout out to eddie murphy for for being a, a joe fan when he was a little guy or as an adult probably i don't know or at least for joe for taking notice of eddie murphy and giving me that thought in my head uh going on the box you got that box art that we saw earlier where he is uh holding his spear gun at you and then the back digital render you see is a six foot tall male uh and it shows you everything that you get with this figurine and it's uh it's essentials there and then you got the legal goblet of gook and they draw your attention to um i don't know why but they draw your attention to the chest strap of his of his uh scuba gear as though it were a feature that could do something besides just sit there, which it's not. They did that before with scrap iron and his grenades. I guess it's just drawing your eyes to some finer details where there's multiple paint tones present besides just one. But then they show you something very cool, which is his depth gauge and uh, sonar or radar device little riggins there. Something for that uh, multi-pivotal head to look at. And, and you'll see that on the figure. Like his articulation is stellar. Uh, and then down below, you got your primary combat functions uh, or PCFs as I refer to them in my career. And you can go on to Hasbro.com and find out what they are. And there it all is while you're on Hasbro.com. Scan that QR code. Let us know what in the comments, what all that says. And there's that picture again. And then the G.I. Joe emblem and more legal gobbledygook plastic. Free packaging, always fun. All right, guys. Then we've got the crate, the animal crate that it comes with, and I had to get number 73. That's the year, that's my year. Uh, 73 is the year, right? So I had to have them. And then you've got the, the wrap that it protects all his gear. Oh my, let's talk about protecting that gear. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Guys, Torpedo was my first experience where it didn't. So let's turn the camera around. Let's have Torpedo in his element as I took the time to build Cobra Island a little bit 
And uh, I built this feature of my Cobra Island with Torpedo in mind. So I'm just gonna turn that camera around for us all. And here we have Torpedo in his element next to a little pool of water and ready to go in. So this is how we'll look at him today. If I can get the camera in the right angle without killing it. All right, guys. So as you can see, he is uh, head to toe, very realistic, very much uh, looks like a Navy SEAL clearance diver or Navy SEAL diver that you would see in the news uh, on CNN uh, if they were doing some operations uh, somewhere and they got a clip of what they looked like going up in a helicopter or coming off the boat. Uh, this is the kind of gear you would expect of that kind of a character for sure. And then uh, you've got him with his breather mask on there. It's a dual cable breather mask. And I think if I remember right, when we had the original, I just going back to look at that package again, how they presented that figure to us as children was that he had the backpack, but the, the breather apparatus was all incorporated into his face and there was no uh, unnecessary hosing. Uh, well, sorry, very necessary hosing, but no no hosing uh, represented on the figurine back in the 80s. And here it is on here, right? Uh, and then you can see that he's got uh, in the left corner, he's got his uh, spear gun there leaning on the rocks. And he is carrying his submachine gun pointed downwards. And you can see that wrist cuff there. But most importantly, as per the box, you can see there is multiple colors at play at this particular junction of the chest. So we've addressed that, okay? We are going to have a closer look. I am going to pull him out of there, but I at least wanted to discover him in his element and, uh, and talk about him a little bit, guys. So this articulation uh, the issue with uh, G.I. Joe classified is that it is fantastic. However, it does get you some noticeable points where certain uh, articulation points that were good on one figure don't necessarily work with another figure when you start adding features and key details to that figure that made them the Joe that they are. Uh, Torpedo does suffer from only one of them, and it is the back pin issue in the backpack. So let's, uh, let's pull Torpedo out of here, and you can see how nicely those flippers stay on now. Right? We're going to talk about all that in a second. We're just going to pull the camera back. Turn the island around. In a way that doesn't knock everything all over the place. And we'll just put them up here. Bring the camera up. Let's see. I apologize for the shoddy camera work, guys, but I am paying only myself to do this stuff. So, what do you do? All right, and I pay myself in toys. What are you gonna do? Jesus, that sucks. I need a better stand. Pardon my swearing. Or taking anyone's Lord's name in vain. I'm gonna have to start this over soon if I have to keep going like that. There we go. That stays. There we go. Head to toe. I apologize. Here. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the mask. And I'm just going to flip that all the way back and down. And we'll get to the backpack and what that mask looks like flipped down over there in a bit. But there's Edward Lealoa as we want to see him. And I got to pay a lot of respect to that head sculpt. I think they really captured uh, uh, the features that do separate him from a Caucasian male to a... Uh, Hawaiian, Filipino, Samoan kind of feel to the character. Definitely uh, feels definitely more Hawaiian feel to it. I would have liked a second head where you could see maybe he's got uh, some dark hair. Maybe he's a certain like shave head guy, hair guy. Who knows? Like just have a couple of other featured, like a different feature head where he, he's got that uh, the scuba gear fully down. And you see what he, he looks like underneath that. But uh, overall, for the head sculpt, just perfect. Uh, there is no complaints because it is such a simple sculpt, right? It is a form-fitting uh, dive, dive cap uh, part. And the neck, uh, it does have just the limited articulation, but the head's got the full articulation. And you can look pretty high up. Not as high up as Flint, per se, but high up enough that underwater, he's doing stuff. 
And the mask does sit on well, even as you're posing them for the most part. Let's get that on there so you can see. But it doesn't. What does happen though, guys, and I will point this out, this is the annoyance of trying to keep the mask fluidly moving with the helmet is every now and then these will pop out and you do have to reset them. Okay, but you can see mask turning. You can still get that low to the left and to the right and upward range of motion from the head, even with the mask accessory strapped in the way it is. And there you can see how I've got it seated at the back. Okay, it does interfere with where they intended for you to put the um, the spear gun, but it is what it is. I liked it there and I don't always keep the spear gun with him. So back to the head, you can see he's got kind of a, a quiet man's expression. He's observant, he's not emotional, uh, not like say, uh, the sneering look uh, or the yelling look of Shipwreck, who he, he might sit beside on your shelf when you get him. Going down, there's not a whole lot of details that need to be discussed when you talk about a guy in his dive gear because it's a dive suit. So it's got one thing, one thing only, and that's to to keep him uh, insulated underwater at depths and, and whatnot, right? So you're not going to have a whole lot of like unnecessary seams pockets uh etc cetera, etc cetera. but you will get d uh, gear strapped on there and they did do that with him so i'm just gonna take this uh i i don't know if this is an ump or what what design boarding gun it is it does look like a real military gun i want to say it's a heckler kosh but it's not one i've ever used anyways uh we'll get that out of there uh and we'll put that off to the side for now we'll just have a look but with the dive gear yeah, you, you expect him to come with a knife. So, of course, he is coming at you with the knife on the hip. And we'll pull that out, have a look at it right now. And it's a blackened blade, which you guys know how much I like the blackened blade. And it goes to the idea that he's a knight's operations guy and he doesn't want to be seen. So he's going to blacken his blade so it doesn't catch any light, especially seeing as it's coming out wet probably half the time. Uh, so I like that. And it's got that uh, serration on the back edge plus some gutting hooks for, you know, if he needs to open a shell, kill a fish, take a throat out, whatever. Uh, it's there. Okay, cut Definitely good for cutting air hoses. That was a nice little side thing, but I wanted to say the one that I really like and I, I theorize about is the, the leg one. Okay, so... He's carrying around. You guys know I, I'm an advocate for carrying around a lot of extra ammo if you're a frontline soldier or anything like that. But for a guy like Warrant uh, Lealoa here, I, I would not, right? He's got his submachine gun, and you can see that it's uh, it's a 5.56. Five, uh, it's, it's got the detachable mag, and it's pretty wide. It's pretty long, and he's got no extra mags on him, and I'm fine with that because he's doing 90% of his work underwater this is just for getting along the shoreline basically and then getting back out right so one mag and hopefully he only needs zero rounds out of that if he's doing his job right anyways right and yeah you would keep that barrel uh covered in something like this would probably be in a in a dry bag of some sort towing along behind him as he swam uh or on his somewhere right leave that off to the side but it's th these pouches are what i wanted to draw the eye to right the thing I theorize about these pouches that I like that they included in here, maybe one in there, and you're used to seeing them on a belt in some format, is some weights. Uh, divers need their weights to, you know, like to maintain a depth level of certain time and avoid buoyancy issues and things like that. So I like that the, these are put on to this figurine. And uh, I think in the original design of Torpedo, if I were to go back to the figure, they were on the legs as well. Um, but back then, uh, there wasn't enough attention to detail as, as far as I see it to, for me to, as a child, to have recognized it. But as an adult, you notice it more. And with an adult with a military experience now, now I pay attention to how big these pouches are and what is likely inside, not what the cartoons or the comic books would have me believe what is necessarily inside. So weights. I would have liked to have actually seen some uh, weight belts that you could take on or off of him, uh, maybe around the ankles or the, the legs or the belt or belt line, obviously. But overall, 
I mean, it was just one of these little details you pick up, right? Again, moving down the arms and legs, you, uh, you, you've got the seam lines where you need the seam lines. And they've, they've given you different color hands and uh, ankle points, which do draw attention to where the articulation points are. But the, the, the pins on the elbows and knees are the hidden system. And the hinge point's very good for getting some good articulation. And this guy, he bends over very well with the backpack off. Ah, uh, you guys hear me keep saying it. I, If they have a backpack, the articulation often suffers. You see how that hose popped out too, right? But before I take it off, he's got that nice molded, and that might be a weighted or a buoyancy thing. I'm not diver qualified, but I like the detail of this new dive pack versus the the spacey sci-fi one, the gray and orange one he had as, a, as an 80s figure. I like that they modernized this. And... This design, I guess we see again with the Cobra Eel, but you got all your dial, your nozzle dials at the bottom over here. And then this is the clip that they want you to put the spear gun in, right? Uh, there's the mask. You get a better look at that mask. And they put the red in just almost the perfect spot to include it, just to put a third color option into this figure. Uh, but this pin, you can see how my rim is on the pin. It's getting worn down. Here's why. I'm going to put it off to the side. I am having to compete with this tiny hole on the on the webbing. Now, the webbing is a separately adjusted piece. And it does. It's for, for other webbings. Like, if you look at Stalker, Snake Eyes, and others, this pinhole issue with the webbing is definitely more present with them. But this one is nice and tight to the chest. So you can bend this guy fully over. And still have your pin lined up well enough, right? That's not what's creating the issue. It's not the alignment. What it is, it's the flexibility of this very thin, thin plastic. And I'm just going to try and use, maybe, there we go. So if you look at the flexibility of this plastic, it's very thin, right? And so what ends up happening is as the backpack pin is pushing against that first layer, the edges are meeting resistance right along the rim of the hole. And because it's so, so thin, that's actually causing it to bubble inward a bit. It's it's pushing inward against, against this equal diameter hole, right? So then you have a bit of a backpack issue. So as my peg rounds on this, and if you guys remember back in the 80s, when a peg rounded on that hard plastic pin that the backpacks use, it was a four-pointed star pin, they became really loose and wiggly. And then they just slip off. Uh, so I'm wondering if that is going to be avoided even with these new designs, new plastics, even as these rub effects happen from th that kind of stuff, if that... I, I have faith that that actually won't have any problems because the pin is narrow, deep, and 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 getting its natural grip because of the uh, the type of plastic they're using. Anyways, it's just a theory on that. This whole time, you guys have been able to see these flippers. Uh, a really cool thing they did was that they included lined up holes. So if you wanted to put them on a articulation base like a stand. Um, not that they're included with the show, but they recognize that you guys want them. Um, you can do that. You can put them on stands and pose them as such on stands, all that good stuff. Uh, and then of course they are just slip on slip offs and, uh, you just plop them right off. Right. So I'm just going to turn the attention back to the backpack again, uh, because I think we all understand the figure we're looking at and, you know, the simplest things are often the ones that work the best. And Snake Eyes is the living proof of where that really uh, hit well with G.I. Joe. But going back to that backpack for a second, I just wanted to point out, what was it? It was, uh, <clears throat> pardon me. There was an issue with the backpack. Uh, ah, so the hose clipping in and clipping out. We've got that on there. And then we've got the spear gun. That was it. I wanted to show the spear gun. So I got to pull that back out of wherever I had that set. You guys have a good look at that. 
I'll find his spear gun again. There it is. So that's what this is supposed to be like right there when that's clipped on. But you can see mine's not the tightest right now because I'm not used to clipping it in. There we go, right? So there we are. With the spear gun, you can see mine still has a slight warp. Mine definitely needed to get the hot water treatment on everything. And uh, that didn't quite uh, solve it the first time. I'll have to do another one at another time. But even in its protection, and this was wrapped in cardboard in that box inside this cellophane uh, baggie. But even in that, it got warped. It was a very thin, thin piece with a lot of thin support to it. So uh, I understood it. Thankfully, we were able to resolve most of it, but you can see I got to fix that vertical bowing a little bit to make it perfectly straight if I wanted to do that. But the other thing about the backpack I would have liked to have seen, and I've seen it on a McFarland diver toy, which I have somewhere around, buried somewhere in my one of my boxes, but uh, they included a little D-ring or a carabiner that actually clipped onto his belt that allowed him to carry the flippers on the side and at first, that's what I thought they were trying to do with this, but it's incredibly awkward to even try. And I'm seeing that I don't think that's what this was originally designed for, but I've been trying to get this to manipulate to hold the flippers. So when he's not, he doesn't always have to be wearing them, but I haven't found that way. But it'd be nice um, if to find a way to clip a little carabiner onto it. Maybe if, you, if you're a conversion guy and you want to work one on there, it would help to carry the flippers for sure. Uh, but overall... Guys, what you're looking at is a very um, excellent course correction on a cultural character. In that, by cultural, I just mean his ethnicity being more uniquely Hawaiian than anything in its intent when they first developed Edward Leoloa uh, back in the 80s. And I think what you're seeing is a really great updated version of that where you can see the intent there. And you've got a great version of a Navy SEAL G.I. Joe dive character. So the playability grade on this guy, I'm giving it a B plus because the, the peg hole issue with the backpack creates a lot of problems with the backpack. And the stowage for the, uh, the, the mask and the flippers, as you can see, can sometimes not look really fluid or organic with the figure it's easier to set that gear off to the side as you would expect the diver to do as he as he de-geared and got ready to go ashore take out his target come back gear back up and go uh that's easier but when you're trying to leave the gear on unless it's all on and he's underwater you're getting into some issues uh so b plus on playability but tacticability a plus all around he's got the right loadout he's got everything he needs represented that i would want to see in him uh for a navy diver and there's enough subtle hints that what he does doesn't involve swimming with dolphins and and uh you know tricking cobra's boats into turning around no this guy sinks ships uh he he tightens loose lips he he moves in the dark and uh he is a nightmare and i think we have a a really good nightmare represented character uh as the vipers probably found out just recently in the background so guys that's my overall grade on torpedo and i think that'll be the last video of the day we'll just turn that back to me for a second Thanks again for watching today. Thanks uh, if you uh, like this and you hit that like. I appreciate that. I appreciate you. And uh, if you subscribe, man, do I ever really appreciate your time and for sharing my time with me uh, doing the thing that I love, which is talking about this great little series and creative idea that Hasbro uh, has on their hands and that was uh, so much a part of my childhood and probably a part of yours as well. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back when I have another review I want to do. All right. Talk to you then. Bye.